One of the biggest reasons why I eat only one meal a day is adherence and convenience. I mean, it's just so simple. You eat once a day and it helps you to maintain a lean body composition and stay healthy throughout the entire year without really counting your calories and just tracking all of your nutrient intake. The most frequently asked questions I get have to do with what the hell do you eat and how many calories? Well, in the rest of this video, I'm going to tell you how many calories to eat on one meal a day for both fat loss and muscle growth. Madness. Weight loss is governed by thermodynamics, calories in versus calories out. If you eat fewer calories than you burn, your body will compensate for it by burning body fat and or muscle. However, there are many factors that affect your body's energy requirements, such as the amount of muscle mass you have, your age, levels of physical activity, sleep, hormones, and general metabolic profile. For example, sleep deprivation increases the proportion of energy being obtained from muscle as opposed to body fat. Therefore, calories do matter, but you can't ignore the other dynamic variables that are based on the individual. According to the US Dietary Guidelines, the average woman needs 1600 to 2400 calories per day, and men 2000 to 3000 calories. Unfortunately, that would apply to people who are already lean, not overweight, and doing some form of physical training. The vast majority of people are not at an optimal body composition, and they need to lose weight. They're also more sedentary, and therefore would have to be eating a lot less. One 2012 study tracked how many calories do the Hadza hunter-gatherers burn per day, and they found that on average, they burn basically the same amount of calories as Western office workers. Therefore, most people in modern society are overweight because of eating too many calories. Their energy requirements aren't that high to justify eating over 2000 calories every day. The Hadza are probably eating fewer calories, which is why they're able to stay lean. That's why people have a false understanding of how many calories they actually need to be lean and how much are they burning. Now I can eat anything! To lose 1 or 2 pounds per week, you'd have to be eating 500 to 1000 fewer calories every day. A more conservative but slower decrease would be 500 calories and a more aggressive one, 1,000. Eating one meal a day makes larger calorie deficits easier because you have a smaller time window where you eat. If you eat only within an hour or two, you have less time to mess things up, so to say, which doesn't mean that you couldn't eat 10,000 calories in one sitting. You probably could, and it's important to pay attention to how many calories you eat, even when doing OMAD or any other type of fasting. How many calories you should eat on one meal a day depends on these things. One, your goals, i.e. build muscle or lose fat. 2. Your current body composition, i.e. how much muscle and body fat you have. 3. Your levels of physical activity, i.e. how many steps you take and what kind of exercises you do. 4. What's your current metabolic rate, which is primarily determined by your body weight, muscle mass, physical activity and what kind of food are you eating. Generally, the US dietary guidelines are correct if you want to maintain weight or even build muscle, but if you want to lose weight, then you still have to be eating at least 500 fewer calories every day. How many calories to eat on OMAD also depends on how often you do it. If you are doing one meal a day every day continuously, then you should apply the idea of eating 500 to 1000 fewer calories every day, and then having a small refeed around your maintenance calories once a week or so to keep your metabolic rate high. If, however, you're eating OMAD maybe once or thrice a week, and you eat two or three meals at other times, then you could drop your calories even lower than that and turn it into a fasting mimicking day. The fasting mimicking diet prescribes eating 500 to 1000 calories for 5 days of the month to mimic some of the longevity benefits of extended fasting without fully going into a fast. It can also work as a fat loss tool if you can't go for these extended multi-day fasts. Thanks to eating more meals on other days, you'll also avoid metabolic adaptation. How many calories you should eat also depends on your levels of physical activity. On days that you are working out and doing some form of training, then you would naturally be having to eat more food in order to recover from the exercise and promote muscle growth. But you definitely don't need to be bulking or, you know, exceeding your maintenance calories to see a positive effect. The idea is that on days where you're resting, then you naturally eat less calories. And on days that you work out, you just increase your calories a little bit or just decrease the total deficit. 48% body fat. Because while eating one meal a day, you have such a so small time frame to consume your food, then you don't want to kind of waste the calories on nutrient poor foods like processed foods. You would want to focus on the nutrient dense foods that give you the essential nutrients in such a small time frame. If you don't get enough amino acids, you're gonna lose lean muscle. 
That's why it's still important to keep your protein intake relatively high on intermittent fasting. It's a good idea to aim for 0.7 to 1.0 grams per pound of lean body mass. It's said that dietary fat should contribute at least 15% of total daily calories, but for optimal health, your fat consumption should at least fall somewhere between 20 to 35%, which on a 2000 daily calorie intake would be around 40 to 80 grams. Most people can safely stick to less than 50 to 100 grams of fat per day. If you don't eat enough carbs, then you're just going to be fine because carbs are non-essential and you're going to shift into deeper ketosis. You can do OMAD with carbs, but you won't get any negative side effects if you eat fewer carbohydrates, whereas missing out on protein would be much worse. The most nutrient-dense foods are organ meats, liver, heart, red meat, fatty fish, egg yolks for protein and fats. You can already get all the healthy fats you need from these foods, and you don't really need to push it higher. Next to that, some fermented foods, sauerkraut, vegetables and tubers are also great for carbs. You can also check out my other video about how I structure my meals and carb refeeds. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, and notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered. Now I can eat anything!